Here we go. The last real day of week of work for the week. Let's not kid ourselves here. Thursday and Friday, you don't give a crap. You're not working. You're watching basketball. And, of course, watching and listening to the OVE podcast, Ohio versus everyone. The Torg, Sam Grooms, we cover all Ohio sports, some of the big national stories as well. I want you to subscribe to the new YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash at Ohio versus everyone. Got our sports memorabilia rewards package. We're creeping up to 1,000. When we hit 1,000, we're giving a lot of stuff away. So I want you to be a part of that. You won't get in unless you subscribe, and we are going to get to it soon, probably in the next couple of days. Going to divide all those cool prizes up and give them out. Cool stuff. We'll run them all. Remember, if you're on Meta, give the stars. We'll get you in the conversation and get you in on the Super Chat as well if you're watching it on YouTube. If you're hurt at work or in an accident, let attorney Robert Sugar go to war for you at warforyou.com. And Sam, we even have a fun poll question today because in this poll question, there's only right one right answer. Now, there's going to be a million responses but there's only one right answer and I will fight you. I will fight. I'm wondering if we have, if we are thinking the same thing because we haven't discussed this yet. No, we haven't. I think I know yours. I'm writing it right down. I'm trying to think which, I mean, common sense tells me what it should be, but I'm, I'm just not sure if we're on the same page here. Yeah. The poll question for today, you can chime in on the chat or our social media pages. We're on, uh, we are on X, we are on Instagram, we are on Facebook. Uh, don't Stop Believing went 18 times platinum. 18 times platinum. According to Forbes, it's the number one song of all times because it went 18 times platinum. So we're asking you, what's the best song played during sporting events? It doesn't have to be a goal song. We're just talking like Thunderstruck by ACDC. Uh, jump uh, by that, what it was that? Uh... It's Van Halen. No, no, You're no. You're talking about Jump you. Around. Yeah, jump around. What was that? 1990s. House of, House of Pain. House of Pain. There you go. So it's not necessarily because a lot of people are chiming in going, Renegade, when the Steelers enter the fourth quarter. No, you could have Renegade. But we're just talking song in general that you want to hear at a sporting event because Don't Stop Believing is played all the time. And here's the wrong answer. Sweet Caroline is the <laughs> wrong answer. I will, punch is, you, I will punch you in the throat and kick you in the dick. That song is so rapey if you listen to it. Oh, it's awful. And like legit rapey, not like honey, it's cold outside. We we, we want to cancel Christmas rapey, like legit yeah. creepy as hell. Neil Diamond is creepy. Do, do you know who Jim Jeffries is? Yes, the comedian. I've interviewed him several times. So he he had that that bit. I think it was on his first special. And every time I hear it, thinking Neil Diamond, it's like we've been downgraded. What's the what's the what's the bit? Uh, he basically talks about how he, he's he's a, a has a first uh, first class ticket from sort for some like really long uh, a flight coming up, and he and he gets downgraded because Neil Diamond and all his uh, all his <laughs> entourage and posse come in and basically take the entire first class cabin up. <laughs> so he talks about how he like he like rallies the troops, all these people that are on a flight delay, and fucking Neil Diamond. Have just, you yeah, it's, it's uh, have you ever bit. seen the show Will Fred? Uh, is that just the one at, with Fred Armisen? No, it's a FX show. It, it's Elijah Wood. Okay, and it's with this Australian dude who's like Jim Jeffries in a dog suit. The dude is like, oh the, yeah, I remember the premise. Yeah, I yeah. asked Jim Jeffries about it. I go, dude, you know you look exactly like that dude, that guy in Will Fred. He goes, dude, I get it all the time, like all the time. Well, he had a he had a sitcom on FX that was canceled, right? It was like two years, ran two years, two years. Yes, seasons. with uh, DJ Quails, right? Yeah, something like that. That's crazy. Anyway, uh, yeah. So, so don't stop. So, you're telling me that "Don't Stop Believing" is the is the most platinum or most popular song ever because it's gone 18 times platinum. That's what Forbes claims. Wow. That's pretty crazy. I think that is the most popular song of all time. Well, it just passed like uh, Sun. Is it Sunflower by Post Malone? Post Malone? Who's, who's an ugly man. He just, I, I was looking at his picture. He's a uh, talented dude, but he's ugly. He's uglier than I am. I could he's say a, that he's an ugly person. Yeah, he's his. He's a different looking dude. But I tell you what, like if you could have anybody's like outlook on life or disposition, oh, yeah. like he would be one that you would want. Oh, dude, he likes to play rock music. He can sing. I, and Dude's Sunflower's there, popular because it was in the 
Spider-Man Megaverse or whatever it is, that animated Spider-Man. The thing about Don't Stop Believing, it's been played consistently in, on rock radio stations, uh, arenas across the country, movies since it came out, what was it, in the late 70s, early 80s? I mean, that song, Don't Stop Believing, has been a staple for 40 years. Sunflower by Post Malone's not going to be a staple in American music history. No, so, I mean, it's no. easy to say, Don't Stop Believing, Forbes, the top song of all time. So that's the poll question. What song played during sporting events? The best song ever. There, yeah. there's, there's no wrong answer because there's a lot of good ones. I mean, you could pick the entire category, uh, cata- catalog, Sam, of ACDC and just skate during a sporting event. Thunderstruck, Hell's Bells, whatever the hell it is. Back in Black, whatever it is, get you going. But yeah. second segment, I'm going to tell you. Yeah, Thunderstruck. There's, there's Thunderstruck came to mind, but I, I, I and as much as I love it and get you amped up, I, it's not, it's not what I'm thinking of. But like I said, I am curious to see if we match this up. So, uh, let's jump into it, man. A lot of stuff to talk to today. Um, high state today is it has held or is holding. I think it started at 11:30, so my guess is they're done by now. But ha- having their pro day, um, Marvin Harrison Jr. did not do any kind of workout. Um, does this? Does this send any kind of red signal or red flags or, or uh, any alarm bells off in your head by him not basically doing anything at the combine or at their pro day? No, because I think he knows where he's going now. Is he a diva? Absolutely, right? I think it's safe to say Marvin Harrison Jr. is a diva, but I could probably name you 15 receivers not named Justin Jefferson who is a diva, and you know what? Justin Jefferson could turn into a diva. We don't know. It's just he's he's been – a fairly good guy hasn't turned into that guy yet. But listen, man, receivers are divas. It's the diva position in the NFL. His dad is a Hall of Famer. He's got the diva attitude. Uh, one thing I will tell you, a little inside info. I talked to three people, two that cover, one that does sports radio in Phoenix, two that cover the team. He actually checked, in fairness, to report the whole story about Marvin Harrison not participating uh, in Pro Day. He contacted the Cardinals and said, hey, if you want me to do something, is there something you want me to do? Do you want me to run routes? Do you want me to catch passes? What do you want me to do? Because I don't plan on participating, but if there's something you want me to do for you, I will do it. And the Cardinals said they had enough information on him. They had all the tape, the film. They were cool with him not participating today. So I think that the NFL teams can see all they want to see, Sam. I'm not buying into this, uh, the neighbor's kid from LSU jumping over him. I know some people are causing, you know, social media, trying to trend on social media, these NFL draft gurus by saying that, oh, I think neighbors is much better than Harrison. Uh, Harrison's here and neighbors is here or vice versa. You could put him in any. I, I think there's a big difference, Sam, from this standpoint. Marvin Harrison was better with Kyle McCord and neighbors had the best quarterback in the draft. Yeah, and I wouldn't even go as far as to say that that Marvin Harrison Jr. is acting like a diva here. I think he's being smart about this whole thing to where everything everything an NFL team that that is eyeing him to potentially draft him, anything that they need to see, they've already got. They they've got a couple or a few years of game tape, and I think it was smart on 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 his side of it, on Marvin's side of it that he went to these Apparently went to nine different teams that were, you know, wanted to talk to him or uh, basically ha- have interest in drafting him and says, hey, I'm going to be here. Is there anything you guys want me to do? Nine different teams came back and said, no, you're fine. Like, we, we've got all we need. So, you know, I don't I don't have an issue with with, you know, participating in the underwear Olympics. Like, I don't everything that you're going to need to see on Marvin Harrison to see if he's going to be a fit and successful in the NFL. You've already seen on tape. So why would the guy waste time? you know, training to just run in a straight line fast or do a shuttle or any of these things, uh, take a test that you know that the guy can already do because he's already done it and he's put plenty of it on tape, right? So I I don't, I don't, I think it's smart. I don't, I also don't understand why more players don't do that. Like I understand if there's a guy that, you know, played at some directional school that you really haven't heard of, but might have a shot and make it in the NFL would go to do it. But I mean, this guy's got, he's got everything you've seen on tape and he's got the pedigree of a hall of fame wide receiver in his dad. So I have absolutely no issue with, with Marvin going this route. I think a lot of this pro day stuff is for the guys who can't make visits. You're allowed an NFL team. You get 30 visits, 30 workouts, 30 private workouts, right? 
where you go to a team's facility and you work out for that team. You're limited to 30, right? So I could see a pro day for Mike Hall if he was healthy or different guys on the team uh, around college football, the, the second, third, fourth round picks, even the guys who are the fringe first round picks. I could see them working out pro day because they get a better idea of how a player can work out on the field and mesh with their team when they're working out. So I totally understand that. With Marvin Harrison, though, you're right, Sam. One thing to point out that I, when I was talking to the guys who covered the Cardinals today, don't assume the Cardinals are picking number four because the Cardinals would absolutely, you know, I mentioned, hey, would the Cardinals take 11 and 23 for number four? Absolutely, and they would probably give Minnesota back. If Minnesota's desperate and they have someone at four, hope to God they're not dumb enough to take J.J. McCarthy at four. But the Cardinals absolutely would trade back to let someone get Marvin Harrison Jr. at four. Not that they don't love him. Look at the Cardinals' wide receivers, folks. Look at the talent, the, the wide receiver room. But the one thing is it's a deep position in the draft. You could see five or six guys taken in the first round. They feel if they move back, they can still get a pretty good wide receiver and they need help. You know, one one beat writer's a torque. The only thing they really like is Paris Johnson and jo- Jonah Williams on the left side, who they're moving back on the left side this year. Outside of that, they like Buda Baker. And then take a look at their depth chart and tell me if there's any position on that team that you don't think we need help with. And there's a lot of help. So the Cardinals, I can almost guarantee if they get anything close to what they like to move from four, I don't even know if Marvin Harrison will go to the Cardinals just from the standpoint. On paper, take a look when when this podcast is over. You're done with this po- podcast. Go to ourlads.com and take a look at Arizona's depth chart. I didn't even realize, Sam, how bad it is. On paper, this team is far worse than the Carolina Panthers. This team yeah, is for, for- awful. A franchise that needs as many pieces as they as they do, it almost makes sense to trade back and, and acquire assets to go get more guys. Oh, they need everything. Um, you know, I, I saw that Will Howard and Devin Brown were throwing today, so I'm curious to see what we hear uh, coming out of Pro Day from there. But also Ryan Day spoke, more or less said that the offense is going to lo- look a lot different. Um, wasn't really stressing uh, losing Benedict Alford uh, too much. And my prediction, and I guess a lot of what what people are talking about, is Chip Kelly's run game is going to be way more downhill, man on man kind of power, versus the the zone stretch scheme that they they used to run, which I'm pretty pretty happy to see. So, um, wh- what do you expect to see from the offense? I guess going forward, coming coming up next year, what, I think what big, I, I think big plays, and you know he he mentioned you know and and you're right, you know how 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 about the hater Sam. When Chip Kelly was named offensive coordinator and people went out there in chats and message boards and social media and said, oh, this offense is going to be soft. I think you heard the exact opposite from Ryan Day yesterday in his press conference afterwards. You know, they're still evaluating. That's why we mentioned on this podcast the information that we got about Tony Alford. And there were some uh, social media uh, guys who cover the team in social media who are tweeting out that Tony Elford was hanging around, giving the playbook to Michigan, knew he had the job a lot sooner than he did, but he wanted to hang out and coach a couple practices and be a spy for Michigan. And I told you on this podcast, Ryan Day didn't give a crap. The offense wasn't even put in. It's not even a big deal. Ryan Day could give a crap less, and he said the same thing yesterday in the presser, right? He said, he said it was two practices. We put nothing in. Right. Everybody's overreacting over stupid stuff here. They have they had two practices, and people think, like, Tony Alford is, like, super spy and has, like, a spy pen and, like, a camera on his head, and he's recording everything for Sharon Moore up in Michigan. Hey, maybe it did happen because God knows they will find any way to cheat to win a football game, right? We know it's it's not below them to cheat like crazy. Maybe maybe Tony Alfred in the Woody Sam put those ring cameras or put teddy bears with cameras in it everywhere so he could get a glimpse for Michigan. And then he gave Sharon Moore the app so Sharon Moore can watch what they're eating at the Woody. <laughs> Would be but funny, it, but it was it? all about nothing. We told you that credibility you, with this podcast. Listen to the do, pod. We, do we, you think? Do you think it's important for Ohio State to hire a running backs coach ASAP? And the reason why I ask that is, you know, one of the other things that Ryan Day was talking about too uh, during Pro Day and in, in, in the presser yesterday as well is um, the current running backs are going to be involved in the process, in the, in the hiring process, meaning 
you know, Travion Henderson potentially is going to be interviewing a guy that's coming in and sitting down and talk with, which I think is a great idea. And, and the other thing I'm hearing, uh, which has been kind of reported and talked about, or the name I'm hearing more often, is DeMarco Murray keeps his name keeps getting mentioned a lot. So do do you think do you think A, that's that's a great way for for Ryan Day to keep these guys involved? Um, and then two, do you do do you think that they have to bring a guy in ASAP? I, I would rather do it sooner rather than later so you get accustomed to your coach, especially at a position where it's going to be a strength for your team. You know, Ryan Day mentioned today in, or yesterday in the press conference, wide receivers unknown. Certain guys are stepping up. We need guys to step up. But that was kind of the one of the things he mentioned about Tony Alford. He goes, people are overreacting because we don't even know what receivers are going to be on the field. There are like five or six guys here who we don't know. I do worry, though, and I get the, you know, Henderson and – you know, other running backs input. I understand that. Right. I get it, but don't make that your sole reason why you hire a guy because your players like him just from the standpoint. I think if I'm a coach and I know this guy has input, I'm going to tell this guy what he wants to hear so I can get this job. Folks, this is the premier program in college football right now. And this isn't a Homer take. Nick Saban was alluding to it when he talked to Congress, Ohio state pays. It's the one program that's keeping its players, paying for players, getting the best recruits in. There are other people in the ball game. There's other people with money, but this is the place to be. So is DeMarco Murray going to leave Oklahoma to come to Ohio State, Sam? Absolutely. I joked around about Stan Drayton coming back and leaving Temple because he's the head coach. There's a possibility. This is the premier program in the country because any running back coach knows he'll come here and let, let's say everybody everybody's going to leave after next season. It's going to reload at the end of the year, whether it's recruits or transfer portal, correct? I yeah. mean, this would be heaven for any coach, and it's the reason why Chip Kelly leaves the stressful situation of a dog crap UCLA program to win a natty as offensive coordinator at Ohio State. It's the premier program right now in college football until they change how they do the NIL and the transfer portal. This is going to – whether they do it on the field or they win, Sam, they'll get – boy. Logic tells you they'll get it done in the next three years, right? I mean, logic so, would tell you they'd get it this year. Right. So much could happen between now and the beginning of the season in August, at the end of August. So I'm not as concerned about it. Um, you've got a, probably a, a collective group of eyes on that room right now. You've got guys that are largely veterans. You don't really, in my opinion, you don't really have to have the guy in-house right now. I would like to see it, though, just from the standpoint, the running practices right now. And the next two practices are going to be in pads. They went in pads today. And the next practices are going to be pads. Ryan Day mentioned they're going to be the most physical practices so far. You just want to get a coach in there, though. Just see how the, the, you know, the organization, the program runs their practices, right? This is how we do things. This is how you're going to be involved. This is what we expect from you. Kind of That's what kind of spring practice is for. You know, Ryan mentioned it about Chip implementing things during spring practice. Not everything, but put, but putting things in. So, yeah, I would if they could come to an agreement this weekend, and why not? You still can salvage uh, a bunch of practices before the spring game. So, yeah, I mean, my personal opinion, do it now. It looks like you got down to like three or four guys figured out. Shouldn't take too long. Get the best coach possible and get them in to start Monday at the very least. You, you mentioned the transfer portal, and I woke up to this story this morning, basically, uh, that Caden Proctor transfers uh, transfers from Alabama to Iowa, and now it looks like as soon as the portal opens back up in the spring is going to be transferring back to Iowa. Uh, wanted, wanted to get your thoughts on that, but then also one of the uh, some media outlets, including Buckeye Scooper, reporting that Caleb Downs is going to go from Ohio State back to Alabama. As and well. he's not. That ain't happening. And you troll people for likes because on the bottom of their tweet, they wrote, as reported by some Alabama Twitter fan, totally trolling people for likes and hits today, which is so wrong. You're getting so emotional, getting people emotionally pissed off about a tweet. You you have to wonder, Sam, because there's stories out in college football about guys going to schools, not getting the money promised, and then ended up transferring because what they agreed upon in their NIE L deal were never actually paid out by the collectives that are running the NILs. Is this a situation where Proctor gets to Iowa and hey, we'll pay you a hundred grand by this date, 200 grand by this date? It's kind of happening right now in the NBA with A Rod's group buying the Minnesota Timberwolves, where their main backer backed out 
And then the owner of the Timberwolves, Glenn Taylor, said, yeah, I had to give them two months because they couldn't come up with the money. Now they're trying to find other investors. So maybe it was something simple to Sam is I was not, hasn't dipped in to the transfer portal like other schools have. And maybe they just didn't realize, maybe they made a deal and Proctor said, okay, these guys aren't paying me or I'm not getting what I want. I'm going to hop back in. Or maybe he just kept in contact with his teammates and they were telling him how special Alabama and how good they're going to be. And he realized Iowa sucky. I go to Iowa four losses. I go to Alabama. I have a chance to win a natty realizing Iowa sucks. How many phone calls do you think he was getting from the coaching staff at Alabama while he was in Iowa? Oh, and players nonstop, nonstop. Uh, I mean, absolutely. If you don't think there's tampering going on, you're delusional. Oh, a, a premier player in college football, a premier tackle in college football. Alabama was relying on him to start for the next two years. You get to Iowa. I know he's from there, but oof. You know, when it comes to football programs, Iowa has no chance to compete. And two, Sam, you could add uh, on the other side is, you know, I was just throwing a hypothetical about the money in Iowa. Maybe just Alabama came back with more money. Yeah, I, there, there's a lot of things. That, I'm, or he could realize he got back there and realized this place sucks and I'm going back to Tuscaloosa, which, you know, his thriving metropolises go not exactly up there on the list. Uh, he is hit from a, there hit a break. Well, he is from there, but then he realized pretty quickly. He was like, eh, maybe I'll just go back to Alabama and try to win a natty. Yeah. And get paid. Cause I was not winning anything. Right. Maybe he's just homesick. Maybe he had a, you know, maybe it's something going on with a local gal. Maybe, maybe he found out how bad the Iowa offense is. And he's like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a head on back. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. I, I was curious. They must've been paying a bundle to get him back in Alabama. I had to pony the money to get him back. When we come back, the basketball Buckeyes in a tight one last night for Cornell. But the story is today, I'm going to tell you, we've been wondering, and a lot of people in the local media have been wondering, why name Jake Diebler the head coach before the NCAA tournament, before you could go out and see what other guys would do? Like Dusty May, what if he got Florida Atlantic to another Final Four? And we didn't even look into that option. Well, we know why, at least I know why, and we're going to let you know why Jake Diebler was named head coach when he was, because even in the broadcast last night, they're going, wow, how strange hiring a coach before, like after they got eliminated from the Big Ten title game, before they're getting ready for an NIT game. Well, we have the answer. We'll let you know next on the OVE podcast. We go to war for you. At Sugar Schnarr Trial Attorneys, we don't back down. Accident? Call us today at 877-WAR4U or visit warforyou.com for a free consultation. Know your rights because results matter. That's 877-WAR4U. 877-WAR4U or visit warforyou.com. Warforyou, warforyou.com. Hazmat Ohio is a firefighter-owned and operated all-hazards training company specializing in custom safety training for your company's needs. They offer corporate CPR, AED first aid, confined space rescue standby, spill and emergency response, and they can train firefighters, industry safety teams, and employers. Call 740-507-8802. That's 740-507-8802. Thinking of buying or selling a home? Give Lauren Torgerson a call with Next Home Experience. Lauren has been servicing the Columbus metropolitan area for 10 years. So whether you're a first-time home buyer, considering building, want to upsize or downsize, Lauren can help you with all your real estate needs. Get a free market analysis for your area and get started working on making tomorrow's dreams happen today. Call or text Lauren at 614-296-3952. 614-296-3952 or email at torgersonlauren at gmail.com. OVE podcast, Ohio versus everyone. The tour, Sam Grooms, happy Wednesday, hump day tomorrow. It's like a three-day weekend or a three-day week because tomorrow it's a four-day weekend with the NCAA tournament. No one, and I mean no one, is really working. You're watching basketball. I don't care if you've seen these player these players play zero times during the season. You are absolutely loving what's going on right now 
in the world because you get all day Thursday off. You're watching basketball on a million channels. Friday, Sam, you work in the financial world. You are not. Dude, I've been out with you on Thursdays when I've been doing radio station events and you've been showing up at the bar. Every sales guy shows up at the bar Thursday, Friday. You may you may be surprised. I'm going to get out. Uh, we've got a like a work event or a wholesaler event on Friday. I, I may get out for a little bit for lunch, but I, I don't. Basketball doesn't move the meter for me anymore, man. Really? Yeah, like I, I watched very little, uh, very little of the high State game last night. I checked in on the scores from time to time, but I, I just don't care. I hate the, the sport bores the hell out of me. Uh, by the way, uh, final segment of the show before What's on X, I will uh, give you some something to bet on. I'm going to give you some picks, okay? All right, that works. So we're getting getting more. Uh, oh, by the more... way, Demarco Murray resigned with Oklahoma, so he, he will did not resign. Three year deal was yes. he offered? Uh, no, it looks like by the uh, take a look at the chat there, and I'm going to give you. Yeah, just yeah, offered down. a deal doesn't mean he signed it. <laughs> okay, I'm not. I'm not reading the chat right now, but kind of. Sure. Let me um, know if he took it or offered, because I would think Ohio State would offer him the same three year deal, correct? Well, yeah, but I mean, I. I mean, let's be – Alford was making over 800 k a year, right? Mm-hmm. The running backs coach at Alabama is making over 600 So, I don't know what kind of money OU would come up with, but I'm pretty sure a high state could match or exceed it. But, I, you know, who knows? Maybe he likes um, it there. He played there, right? Yeah, absolutely. Maybe he likes it there. Maybe he, uh, it would just be the same thing. Maybe it would be the same thing if, like, Brian Hartline was available and a team offered him more money, and Brian Hartline would say, listen, I like it here. I'm from here. I went to school here. So we maybe it would take terms. a lot for him to leave it, leave to begin with. You know what I no, mean? No, you're right. You're right. Uh, yeah. We did get some terms of Jake Diebler's contract. Uh, looks like over the next five years, he's guaranteed $2.5 million a year. Um, does have some incentives built in. You know, if he gets to the Sweet 16, if they win the Big Ten, if the team's G- overall GPA is over 3.0, like you'll they'll get bonuses here and there. But $2.5 million, not exactly a ton of money. I think the, the highest paid coach right now in, in uh, college basketball is Calipari. And he's making in the eight two eight five range. Um, obviously, Ohio State last night uh, kind of squeaks one out against Cornell. I believe Ohio State was a double digit uh, a favorite, like ten and a half points, something like that. Beats Cornell eighty eight to eighty three. Um, one bit of information uh, I did see a uh, the Ohio an Ohio State signee for the I believe next year's class, the twenty twenty five class. Colin White was just named Ohio's Mister Basketball for twenty twenty four. Yeah, he's a three-star kid. Uh, he's a top 150 player. He's not, you know, hey, maybe he develops into something special, but he's he's a three-star guy. The rather recruits a top 50 point guard from Utah. And, and so we've been talking about like, man, why didn't OSU do a bigger search? Why didn't they wait for the NCAA tournament to play out? Why didn't they do their due diligence? Wow, you hired a guy after he was six and two as an interim coach, looked good, did a great job. You wonder why did they do it? Here is why they did it. Mark it down. Here's what happened. Sam, what happened in college sports on Monday? Transfer, uh, transfer portal. portal opened up. In college basketball. So transfer what Ross Bjork, Ross Bjork and Ohio State did is they approached the players and said, hey, man, here's our situation. We're looking for a new head coach. And all the players, those are Jake Diebler's guys. And those guys love Jake Diebler. And if Jake Diebler wouldn't have gotten that job, you would have seen an entire team, not an entire team, I'm exaggerating, but they would have to try to keep these guys from hitting the transfer portal. Now, if you remember, two, these are two classes right here, the freshmen and the sophomores, where they're top 10 classes. I think people forget that because we've been so bad the past two years, but Chris Holtman did recruit two top 10 classes. His error in his ways was one, coaching. He did a horrible job coaching this team. And then two, veterans in the transfer portal. He admitted that I went way too young. They played a lot of a lot of young guys. They don't have a go-to guy. I think someone in this class, whether it's Rodney Gale, Thornton, who will find out if he'll be playing against Virginia Tech, someone's got to admir- emerge Sam to be that star. But basically, they Ross Bjork and Ohio State looked at it and said, "Listen, we got two top ten recruits, and they all want to come back these classes. And then we're bringing in a top fifty point guard, and then we have space to uh, add someone in the transfer portal, someone big. So if the players want." Jake Diebler, we can't have a max mass exit and have everyone leave this program and then bring in a Dusty May or the um, 
bring in someone someone else. And then you're stuck with like seven players remaining. And then you have to scramble to try to get players. So this current team of guys went to bat for Jake Diebler and basically said, listen, man, Monday the transfer portal opens up. And if Jake Diebler's the guy, then I don't know what my future is going to be at Ohio State. So that's why they kept one of the re- many reasons why they kept Jake Diebler is they were afraid of a lot of players, Sam, who love Jake Diebler hitting that transfer portal because of fear of the unknown, because of, if, of someone coming in that they didn't like, and then they would be stuck at Ohio State next season with a guy. If that, that, if, if that is like. Ross Bjork's logic, he's dumber than I thought, way dumber than I thought he was. Why? Why would that be? In, in, in today's in today's college sports, you have to understand that that's going to be a part of it. What what are what are Ohio State's players who have produced absolutely nothing, regardless of their of their their recruit class or draft class? What have they produced in the last two or three seasons? But and they had they, a bozo as head coach, and okay. then now they got so, a guy. So then, who... we, so then we replaced that bozo with somebody that was in was within the program the entire time as well. Yes, it's stupid logic. That but but did you watch the team with Chris Holtman and then watch the team with Jake Diebler? They were it's two better, completely opposite yeah, teams. It's better, but that, that he knows how to yes. use those players, and those are the players that are coming back for him. Yes. Okay. The team was better. The bar was set very, very low by Holtman. Let's so be very if, realistic. When the that. transfer portal is closed, then you have your new coach, and then what do you have though? With them. I, I, well, You're struggling. What? You know, it's, you take a step back to take two steps forward. You lose the battle to win the war. You you still hired a guy that has no no head coaching uh, acumen or resume whatsoever. I, I, I don't, know he can I coach this is, team. I, I think that is a cop out in logic. If that's truly what why Ross Bjork hired Jake Diebler. I think it like actually makes more sense than anything that you can speculate on. Just from the standpoint of you work so hard to get. If, if you go look at the recruiting ranks the last two years, and they're ranking right up there with Duke and North Carolina, and you're getting these kids, and you work hard to keep this class, and your thought is, all right, Chris Holtman underachieved with some really special players coming in. Didn't coach these guys to make them better. Over a eight-game mini look, Jake Diebler made these guys look great. Could you imagine what Jake Diebler would do with these guys, a top 50-point guard, and then we will go in the transfer portal and get him a top player to add. Sam, this could be one of the best teams in the Big Ten next year. If they leave, they're, they're bottom feeders. If they lost six guys, if they lose last year's class, if they lose Thornton and Gale and all those guys that they recruited, you're bottom feeders next year. Well, they've been close to bottom feeders the last three. Yeah, but with this talent, there's basketball, no way they should College be basketball is way different year. than football in that you can literally turn a season around or – take a drastic jump from one season to the next with one star player or one recruiting class. Would so you- guess what? Like the last several years with Holtman have sucked. And and if, again, we're, we're assuming that this was Ross Bjork's logic, Ross Bjork's logic, you, you have to, you have to be able, you have to break a, uh, to make an omelet, you have to break a few eggs, right? You have to be willing to take a step back potentially to let the new guy coming in to build the program. What I'm saying right now, and and I still haven't had anybody address the fact that we're we're putting all this faith in a bunch of players that quit noticeably on their head coach. Nobody's talking about that either. Like I understand they want to potentially play for Diebler, but who's to say they don't do that shit again? No, the players. That's fact. So the players went to bat for Diebler and told well, but, and, and, Ross Bjork, "We want him as their coach." What are they going to say? So, but but this is but Sam, this is the new world in college sports, though, and and that's the way it is for for any player on any team, where you could lose everybody because look at look at on the list of guys in the transfer portal from across the country where teams are just gutted because of the new world of free agency. This isn't even like sports free agency where you can sign guys to three-year deals, sign guys to seven-year deals. Obviously, I know college is four years or five years sometimes. But, but Sam, these guys could go every single year. They're going to be popping, threatening, saying we're leaving. The whole landscape of college They're going to do that change. anyway. But not this team. So you're – you look at this team, what they have, and what Diebler's done with them. And tomorrow, last night was rough. I mean, you're not scoring down the middle. You're not completing layups. Uh, Jamison Battle misses two free throws that could have put it away, where that guy's like a 98% free throw shooter. 
They shouldn't even been that close to Cornell in that game. Cornell's tricky, full court press, big, nice rotation. I give them credit. They re- and Thornton gets hurt in the second half of that game. Doesn't play maybe a couple of minutes in the second half. But with if those guys could find in, a, in an emerging player somewhere in the transfer portal, maybe another big. There's no reason the way they played this year and they all stay together. They're going to be a veteran team. Most of these guys are going to be juniors and sophomores next year. There's no way this team should be – the expectation for this team should be top three in the Big Ten. We're going to have Absolutely. a very, very interesting case study in the next couple of years. Did you see who who is probably a potential front runner for the Michigan head coaching basketball job? Is it uh, Beeline? It's Dusty May. Okay. but but We're going to have a very interesting too. case study in the next few years. We will because, because – well, Michigan's a better basketball school, so let's – get that out of the way. Let's just be, you know, not all the time, but in the past decade there, they're, they've been a better basketball school outside of this year. Correct. They have better recent 20 year, a little yeah, better. Yeah. Right? The more I think about it, you're right. I mean, especially when uh beeline was there, he had him, he had him humming a little bit. Yeah. So, I mean, they've lost a lot too, but, but could this, so my question would you to you would be this. All right. Let's say they hire Dusty May. Dusty May, it gets to Florida Atlantic in the Elite Eight, and they hire him at Ohio State, and five guys leave. They have three seniors that leave, and let's say five guys hit the transfer portal, and they're out of here, and you have Joe Bufutzik slapping McGillicuddy, and then the top 50 player, the point guard from Utah, decides to go somewhere else, right? And Dusty May's got to hit the transfer portal, and they're going to try to convince guys to come in. But do you think it's good for this program to go from not making the tournament to not making the tournament to not making the tournament three years straight? Because that's what happened. No, that's I mean, yeah, awful that's, that's, for this that's program. Bad. It's bad. Yeah. I, I, and then you're relying on a guy, Sam, who's never done it on a major level. And I get what you're saying about Jake Diebler hasn't either. I totally understand that. But then you're relying on a guy who's never done it on that type of level to resurrect a program when it's down in the dumps after three straight years of losing. Yeah, you got it. You have to, if you're going to fire a coach, which they did, you have to understand that the program is going to go through a little bit of growing pains because it's going to have to. You have to change, right? But I don't know if if this program is going to next year, though, right? That they're not going to be as bad as they were, and you have no, to assume it, it, they're again, gonna that's get, an incredibly low better. bar. <laughs> I, I just I, I don't understand why you 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 you're scared essentially to have a lost season. Like shit, you just went through four. Like, yeah. what's well, one more to allow a guy to build the the build the program, build the roster the way that he wants to do it? I don't understand. So but, instead, we're going to go hire a guy that's never been a head coach before and think that he's going to be able to build. I, I just okay. Well, you're a Blue Jacket fan. Who's yes. the problem? The coach or the the players? Uh, right now, I would say the coach and and the management. Okay, and coach owner- is the problem, right? I, I think it's ownership. They they've got a good roster. Okay. On paper. Okay. So if you get a new coach, they would be better. Right? Uh, yeah, I mean, they would have to be better what than if what they are right now. Pascal, this would never happen to me. I can't believe I'm saying, dude, what my, where's my car might be called. Let's say Pascal Vincent gets fired. And right today, that would be great. I'd take my pants off. And Jared Bull is interim coach. And they go, what is there, like 12 games left or less than that? Yeah. Maybe <laughs> se- you want to talk about apathy? I, I, I've completely checked out on them. Yeah. Thank God bless you. I told you a month ago you should have. Let's say they go 10 and 2 with Jared Bull. And then they decide, they go, man. Everybody's back on this team, and they really seem to respond to Jared Bowl. And we're going to go out. And we're going to get a prize free agent. We're going to get a goalie to make this team really well. You'd be behind that, wouldn't you? It'd be a step in the right direction. Well, that's kind of similar to what's going on here at Ohio State. That everybody be back because at Ohio State, I think we can all agree it wasn't the players; it was the coach. And a new guy came in. Sam, within one game, the assistant came in and made them look like a completely different team. Whose fault was it? Was it the coach or the players at Ohio State? It was the uh, coach. Largely, well, I, I think it was a little bit of a – it was it was largely the coach, but I don't think the, the players are blameless in that either. I, I would agree. But your coach has to put players in a position to win, and clearly he didn't do it. And clearly there were quick fixes that Jake Diebler realized. And we don't even know Holtman. We, we say, oh, he's such a great guy. But we don't know if Jake Diebler was saying, hey, coach, my suggestion would be – we do this, and my suggestion sure. would be do that and use guys differently. We don't know what was going. As nice as Chris Holtman may seem, maybe Chris Holtman told all the co. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, appreciate well, it, buddy. And, and again, the, the beauty in all this time is going to tell, right? Mm-hmm. So I just, I would, I, I would think, Sam, 
I would think though that with everybody back, that if they couldn't be a top three team in the Big Ten next year, if they add to the roster, and they have to, I think. If if they add to this roster with everybody coming back, and we've seen big improvements with uh Rodney Gale, Thornton, we've seen some of the younger guys play better. I would boy, it would be such a kick in the balls in the sack if they weren't a top three team in the Big Ten. Yeah. And again, our expectations for the program is that they sh- they should be, right? They they made a mistake in the timing of hiring Chris Holtman. They made a mistake in the extension that they gave him. I think they waited way too long to fire Thad Mata. It just seemed like Gene Smith kept, just kept stepping it at every every step along the way. And then now we get this really weird transition to a guy that's unproven and all because he's scared of losing players, the same players that have been here the last two or three years that delivered no results. Like, I just, I don't understand the logic. And my question going forward would be is, is Bjork going to have the balls to make a change, whether it be in the basketball program and the football program when he has to, when the writing's on the wall, or is he going to be terrified that he's going to lose players or See, coaching you use, staff or whatever to to the portal? Like You use the term scared, and I don't think it's scared at all. I think it's a guy or whether I can gut my team or I believe my team can win. So if I believe these guys can win, then I keep Jake Diebler. If I don't think these guys can win, then I got the team. I don't think it's I don't think it's being scared. I think it's it's the decision he had to make was either start from scratch and everybody leaves and then bring in Dusty May or whoever with, who has their own question marks. Or I believe these guys can win and Jake Diebler's the guy who can get them to win. So I don't think it's, it's scared. It's just, do I want to start all over or do I believe I have the right players to win? And he uh, made and the call, choice that he – it'll ultimately be on his ass if they don't win, right? Call me nuts. It's March 20th. He's been here on the job learning under Gene Smith for 20 days. Call me nuts. I don't think he's able to get that his finger on the pulse of that that locker room. Well, Gene quickly. probably helped him, right? Gene, Gene's a big part of the reason they're in this predicament. Isn't it kind of – Talking a, about a guy that's getting no blame for a lot of mistakes yeah. along the way. At least he admits it. Uh, isn't it – isn't it – um. Shows you something though, Sam, that I'm not saying the job's easy because it's not. It's a, probably a pain in the ass job. But when you have a power program, like a football program, like one of the elites, it just, it's easier from the standpoint of football almost runs itself. Do you know what I mean? Football, mm-hmm. football almost runs itself when you can pay to get a head coach to leave his job and be your offensive coordinator. When you have a... You know, NILs, you know, the the different uh, foundations that will come in and then the Schottensteins in the 1870s that will supply the money where you can keep the best players and then bring in a Caleb Downs, right? It's a pretty good job to have, but it also kind of like, man, could you do better in basketball? Like, we shouldn't suck this bad. Alabama's oh, yeah. in the tournament. They're a top 20 team. This Buckeye program, Sam, should have never gotten this bad. Like, No, absolutely never. not. You're, you're absolutely right there with the criticism of Gene Smith because there's no excuse for this team not getting to the Sweet 16 in a decade. That's gross. Yeah, I, I just I, – and I think part of the reason why I don't like – part of the reason why I've always liked college football over, over at the NFL is because largely Ohio State's been worth watching and they've been good, whereas the Browns, Browns have been dog shit. Yeah. yeah. I, I think part of the reason why I'm just so apathetic and could give a shit about – any form of basketball anymore is could be because the sport's getting harder and harder to watch. But then also the the high state basketball team has not been worth devoting any time to. So I, cause they did that to you. They did that to everybody. Right. Right. I'm not, again, I, my criticism of Jake Diebler is not against him personally or, or the job that he's done this to this point. I just don't understand how he got the job. Yeah. That's all. I think, think and I hope, I hope he is. I hope he produces wins. I hope he gets this team into the tournament and goes on runs. I really do. I I I would love to eat my shoe. Like, but I just think there was you had way better opportunities out there. And based upon some faulty logic, 
this is what we ended up with. So I think he got the job because it was either rebuild the program or stick with what you have. And hopefully that the seven and two run they're making now will continue to next year and get even better. Or maybe it was something Greg McDermott was their guy and he wasn't available because he stayed with Creighton. And then, all right, well, if he's gone, I don't yeah. want to start from scratch with my program. I mean, Sam, they have watching them before and after. They do have skill. They don't have a go-to guy yet, and hopefully they figure that out with, with maturity. They don't have a go-to guy, but, boy, they have talent on this team. Yeah, I mean, they, and- they played about as poor as you could last night offensively, especially with, like, simple layups and missing easy shots. Yeah, and 83, 83 points to Cornell. Giving up 83 points to Cornell does not uh... – instill any kind of uh faith in, in them going on a long no they run. didn't play well they definitely didn't play well but you know, but cornell plays a different style i don't you i don't think that's an excuse though because the announcers were sure given an excuse like oh cornell's tough to play with i mean they're come on they're an ivy league school freaking cornell really? exactly when we come back sam we give you the answer of our poll question there is only one on the OVE podcast. And let me tell you about my guys at River Valley Restoration. If you have a project, I know it can be overwhelming. Let them take the stress out of it for you. Give them a call and it doesn't matter if you've got a huge project, small project, or somewhere in between. They will take care of you. Free in-home consultation. They do roofing, siding, gutters, windows, doors, decks, attic insulation. I love that they do bathroom and kitchen remodeling. They can get pricey, but not at River Valley Restoration. The project manager is going to talk with you work with you, picking the materials, picking out everything, taking you through the progress every step of the way, keeping you informed. I love that. At a price that you can afford and you know you're going to get a great job. 10-year workmanship warranty, double the industry standard, and a 50-year roofing warranty. They offer financing as well, 740-785-5000 or at rivervalleyrestoration.com. If you're having an event, everybody needs to be safe. Medical emergencies can happen any place, anytime, anywhere to anyone. You have to be prepared. Event Medical Staffing of Ohio has highly trained medical staff. They provide life-saving care when needed. Basic and advanced life support care to events all across Ohio. Festivals, concerts, fairs, motorsports, any sport you can think of, including film and television. They provide training programs as well, including first aid and CPR. So give Event Medical Staffing of Ohio a call at 740-403-6739 or at eventmedstaffing.com. All right, we're going on a Wednesday OVE podcast, Ohio versus everyone. The Torg Sam Groom, subscribe to the new channel. Watch on the new channel. We uh, may start broadcasting at least a day uh, during the week on our new channel only. Like we're going to pick a random day. And you'll call at three and you're whatever platform you're watching. Of course, it'll always be on the streaming sites, Apple, Spotify, uh, Amazon Prime or whatever it is. We'll always be on those sites. I just mean someday you might like go to Twitter or Facebook and then it's like, holy crap, where's the OVE podcast? Well, we're on the new channel, youtube.com forward slash at Ohio versus everyone. So subscribe to the channel. Got tons of giveaways for you. I mean, let's just... uh Show you some of the stuff with our sports reward, that Montana and Rice helmet we're giving away. Check out this cool Buckeye artwork, man. You hang that on your wall, that beer can art, Gail Sayers autographed, tons of stuff. I, I haven't even gone through my closet yet. We got we got tons of stuff to give away. So, beautiful. Uh, poll question, Sam. You want to hit the uh, – here's the poll question. Think about it. Put it on the chat real quick. The sure. poll question is, don't stop believing went eight times platinum – What's the best song played during sporting events? Uh, so I want to hit the super chat that we had during the first segment when we were talking about high, st- high state football, uh, Chip Kelly, Ryan Day. Uh, Nick Ma, appreciate the five, bud. Um, he will elevate because Chip won't call zone block to the short side against nine defenders. Completely agree. Uh, I don't know what Ryan Day's hard on was with running – uh, running plays towards the short short side of the boundary, but apparently he liked to do it. So I, I think you're going to see a lot of differences in how they run the football um, going forward with Chip Kelly compared to what they've done the last few years for sure. You know, I had, I had no huge beef with Ryan Day calling plays, but I mean, Chip Kelly's a more experienced and accomplished play caller than Ryan Day, right? It gives Ryan Day a chance to fix the special teams. It gives Ryan Day, Day a chance to spend more time 
with other positions of need in the team, kind of almost like a CEO. These play calling dude, Kevin Stefanski said it in an interview recently when they asked him if Ken Dorsey's calling plays. He's going, man, I would love that. It's a pain in the ass to call plays. I think it's almost too much, Sam, for some of these, these uh, coaches to call plays. Look at John Harbaugh, the success he's had at, with the Ravens. He doesn't call any plays. He's not calling any. Dude was a special teams coach with the Eagles. So there's well, something you- he said to be just the CEO of a program and then hire the right people to be that guy. I'm trying to think any any coach in football that's won a championship recently with one exception. It seems like every head coach is not calling plays. The only yeah. one I can think of that does is Andy Reid. Yeah, Booger Reid. Can, can you think yeah. of one? Uh I mean, that's won a Super Bowl or a national championship or anything recently. Oh, like, the Rams a couple years ago. McVay? Yeah. But those are two. So, play. you know, Saban doesn't. Uh, Kirby Smart doesn't. Orgeron didn't, which that's a – I'm still – I still have no idea. I know how he won a national championship. He's going to go down as the worst head football coach to ever win a national championship. Ryan Day still does. Booger Eater didn't. So, I, I think there is a direct correlation to – being kind of separate urban didn't although he would also overrule certain play calls and instead of letting guys do their jobs uh in in big big moments but um yeah i'm curious randy donald new member welcome appreciate it oh there we go i i do that once a show i went from i went from mispronouncing transfer portal to now hitting buttons all the time I want to know who you what what band and or song you wrote down because I'm I'm curious to see if we're on I, the I don't same have to place. write it down. It's it's I could tell you it's the greatest song of all time. Eye of the Tiger by Survivor is the that best is not, that is not it. song. It absolutely is. Listen, when you hear Eye of the Tiger, if the Russians were invading, I don't care what shape you are in, how old you are, you would fight for America. When you hear Eye of the Tiger, you want to lace up skates and go punch someone in the face. Eye of the Tiger is the greatest sports song of all time. When you hear it in the arena, bump, bump, bump. Oh, dude, it gets you going. I mean, I drop my kids off for football practice and I make them, I make them stay in the car and we play that song and I, I don't let them leave until I ask them. You got the eye of the tiger? And if they don't give me a suitable answer, we'll stay in and we'll listen to it five times. You so have to have the eye of the tiger. I, I, I've seen I've seen some uh, kind of scrolling in across the chat. There are three songs by Metallica that I think are fantastic. Inner Sandman, For Whom the Bell Tolls, Seek and Destroy. The, those three lead-ins will get you going. But when I text you this morning, I said one band, two songs. Queen. Queen. Yeah. Absolutely, unequivocally, we will rock you, and we are the champions. But a lot of times, like the Blue Jackets, they are not the champions and will never okay. be the champions. We will rock you then. Doesn't yes. matter. That's the That's be-all. That's the best. There, I, it's not an argument to me. It's not it's not as good as Eye of the Tiger, but it's it's a good tune. We will rock you's good. It's acceptable. Metallica's good, ACDC's good. Yeah, get uh, uh Thunderstruck to lead into that. Um Metallica's have a good. drink on me, whole lot of Rosie. Like there's a lot of there's a lot there of is. bangers with ACDC. I would think ACDC pure capita has more than anyone, right? ACDC. Yeah, and wasn't there like a little bit of – I feel like in, within the past year or two, there's been this kind of movement to say that ACDC sucks and they're they're no better than like Nickelback and they tried to like – Ooh, what? Like, I don't know, man. Like I was here in China. I'm like, are we, are, we're not on the same planet. ACDC makes bangers. And they've been doing it for what, 50 uh, years? Uh, 60 years? I hung out with Nickelback a couple times. And Nickel, and honestly, man, nice like guys. you can throw shade at me. I don't give a shit. Nickelbacks, I mean, don't get me wrong. They've got some like poppy, catchy, like we want to. They were good at concerts and WNCI and make a bunch of money songs, but then they've also got some heavier stuff that's not that bad. No, I've seen them at concert. So I've hung know, out whatever. with them. Like teach no, your own. Okay. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not throwing the windows down in the neighborhood in the summer and jamming out Nickelback. Listen, don't get listen, me wrong, but the worst band of the rock bands is Creed. Creed's pretty bad. Creed is awful. They, I dumped had, a gal because she had a Creed CD in her room. <laughs> True they story. They had, um, so what My Own Prison wasn't, that was what their first like big single. Not a bad song, but then it started getting a little too, just wanting to scratch my eyeballs out and my just duct tape my ears closed. 
I like it when teams have their own tune. You know what I mean? The jump around in Wisconsin, um, Seven Nation Army, Penn State, um, only the losers, Tom Petty, Blue Jackets. <laughs> I'm joking. What do the Blue Jackets have if they Man, have a you, song? you just love kicking them when they're down, don't you? Down. They've been kicking them when they're down. They've been down for 20 years, Sam. <sighs> kicking them when they're down. When have they been up? Let so know. what? So you know, I saw something on the internet uh, on TikTok the other day. Do you know there's only five teams in all of the NHL who haven't gone to a Stanley Cup final? There's only five. Five, only five, and there's only one, two that haven't gone to a conference championship. Do you want to know who those are? Seattle. I know one of them. Who's new? Give me the other one. The Blue Jackets. Uh, Seattle. Blue, Jack- Blue Jackets in Seattle. So out of the out of the five who haven't gone to a Stanley Cup final, Blue Jackets, Seattle, Minnesota, the Coyotes, and boy, I'm missing one more. There's one more. Minnesota, Minnesota. Wild. Yeah, yeah. There you go. But I'm at least they found the Western Conference okay. final. Here's one for you. Best best goal song in the NHL. God, they all use all the same crap. That's the they problem. do. But then there's a couple specifics that have been around for a while. And like I, Boston gotta... song. They do use the dropkick Murphys, right? I think they changed theirs up. Did they? Yeah. Uh, Who do you got? Have you ever heard? Have you ever heard uh, Chicago's uh, Chelsea Dagger by the Fratelli? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what I was kind of thinking. Of. That's a good. I like that yeah. one. That's a good one. Yeah, because that's from um something. Da- uh, who's who's the damn guys who sing that song? The alternative. The, fr- the, fr- the Chelsea Dagger. Yeah. The Fratellis. Yeah. I there think. you go. Uh, I, I like what the Blue Jackets do with theirs, except I hate the chili chant. It's just like a freaking, it just flushes the buzz out of the arena. How about last night? 12 seconds left, tie game, losing overtime. You knew it have was you, coming. Have you seen, folks? Read the story for you Blue Jacket fans out there. Read the story today, right? And everybody likes to crap on Scott O'Neill and say he's the worst coach in this franchise history. He's not. But. Rick Bone is the coach of the Winnipeg Jets. Arneal's the associate head coach. And the understanding was if Rick misses game, Scott is the head coach. So during two seasons, when Rick Bonus has been out, take a guess of Scott Arneal's record. All right. You, you probably don't know. You're probably thinking 500 below 500, whatever. He's 14, four and three is Jets head coach the last two seasons. So tell me, riddle me this, Homers. Who is it? The franchise or the coach? Because I see Arneal. 14, 4, and 3 with the Winnipeg Jets. That includes last year. And then I see the crap every single year here. So tell me who it is. The, so the coach of the franchise. The, the the only thing, the only thing I would say is if you put that roster in Columbus, Columbus is you could coach that team uh, and that I team is still win. I don't know. Pascal. That Vincent team's would really find good. A way, I know, but they'd find a way to choke in the third period. So here's a little, little he'd find a way to mentally mind blink them, Sam, and make them play horrible. So right now, uh, the the Winnipeg Jets are the fifth best team in the NHL. They are the second best team in the Western Conference. Yep. They have the third worst attendance in the NHL by percentage, and they have the smallest arena. I know. It's sad. No, they don't have the smallest. uh, Phoenix does. Well, that's not a real arena. Of the real teams. (laughs) Of Of the real teams. And you know who's number one in the West? Is the guy that we wouldn't hire because we thought Brad Larson was a better coach. Again, coach or franchise. You're right. Again. Anything you want to hit to? You would take a break? Go what's on X? Yeah, let's take a break. We'll hit X and then we'll uh... save all this football stuff for tomorrow, right? Yeah, we got plenty to talk about. And then I got my picks. I got some take it to the bank, bet on these picks, but don't blame me if they don't hit on the OVE podcast. Thanks for watching the OVE podcast. We appreciate it. Spread the word. We're here every day at 3 o'clock. We got a new YouTube channel, and we want you to subscribe for our sports memorabilia rewards program. Throughout the summer, we're going to be giving out a lot of cool sports memorabilia, autographed Buckeye gear, NFL Hall of Fame gear from footballs to helmets, and the list goes on and on. All you have to do is go to YouTube.com forward slash at Ohio versus everyone to subscribe. Then once you do, you're in. So we appreciate you watching the OVE podcast, and we hope you're the next winner of our sports memorabilia package. And all you have to do is subscribe on YouTube.
Yeah, good stuff from the OVE podcast, Ohio versus everyone. The Torg Sam Grooms. Hey, I want to give you a quick, if you're into gambling, I like to gamble the term. I didn't even fill out a bracket. I just really like to gamble on games. Let me give you some games. Just my picks. Be responsible. I throw 25 bucks a game. I don't go nuts. Don't be stupid. Don't get mad at me if these games don't hit. They're just what I'm betting. So instead of getting mad at me, mock me if I lose and call me a stupid idiot. That's that's what you should do. Or if I win, just think I'm the greatest ever. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, first round games. NC State, Mississippi State, Izzo's going to choke on the chicken bone. Upsets, McNeese State, Grand Canyon. They're going to have the best player on the court. Go Grand Canyon over St. Mary's. I think it's their plus five and a half. And if you want an upset, and I'm not sure if I'm going to bet this game, but I'm just saying upset special, like 15 seed Western Kentucky, and NIT action, bet the Buckeyes. Well, they got Virginia Bad Tech game. coming up, correct? Yes, the next bet game? the Buckeyes. Virginia Tech sucko. Buckeyes. By the way, uh, there's a website. It's called wejustscored.com, and it basically has every hockey team, and you click the button. And it basically will do the horns and the songs that they play. Oh, really? Go, yeah, it's pretty It's pretty cool. Hey, uh, and it actually quick, updates when teams change it. Hey, uh, real quick, let's do a couple of quick football things because we don't have tons of things on What's On X. The uh, Jerry Judy, uh, the announcement came that he re-signed with the Browns while we were on the show. Turns out three years, $58 million, $41 million guaranteed. Don't you dare out there, folks. Go on social media and say it's a bad deal for the Browns. The Browns fans are loving this deal, Sam. They love it. And if you go on X and say, I don't, I, I think the team, this Brown fan has such bl- blind loyalty. God bless you guys. I mean, honest to God, the Browns could go out right now. God bless you and trade 20 first round picks for a kicker. And you would say, F you, Torg. He's the best kicker in the world. See you go out there and kick Torgerson. You suck. These the totally only thing were twenty first round picks. The only thing that's, that's tough for me is to is to evaluate like what uh, what other guys are that are basically producing the exact same are are getting right because yeah. there's always that natural escalation as as year years go by and and the salary cap increases. So you know I always just try to think, man, if that were my money, that's a lot of money going to a guy that I don't know about. Yeah, but, let me let me look. So what, 41 million? What is that? 15, uh, 13 ish million a year guaranteed for three years? So I'm kind of looking at KJ Osborne, who just signed for six million a year. And he's got similar, more touchdowns. KJ Osborne in three years has more touchdowns than Jerry Judy. When it comes to receptions, 50, 60, 48 for KJ Osborne. KJ Osborne was a three, by the way. Um, 655, 650, 540. So a little less stats on the yardage. Varying degrees depending on the season on the catches. More touchdowns for KJ Osborne. And KJ Osborne signed for six million. Jerry Judy signed for how many million more a year? So I mean it's the markets going up for the position. I get it. But I think Jerry Judy's a three and a decent three. Do you spend 12 million bucks, 10 million bucks, 12 million bucks on a three. But now he's not going to be three because Elijah Moore and Amari Cooper are in the last years of their deal. Uh, Elijah Moore is going to be the the three and Jerry Judy is going to be the two. So if he's a true two and produces like a two, I could see it being worth the value if he pans out. So, Here's the question to, to you, Sam, is that the Brown fans on the chat. Does... Does Sean Watson make Jerry Judy Betty better, or does Jerry Judy make Deshaun Watson better? Uh, I think that would all depend <laughs> depend on if Deshaun Watson can stay healthy. But I think it gives him. I think it does. It does improve the wide receiver core of the Browns. Oh, absolutely. Well, you know, we talked about we wanted somebody that was going to allow uh, Amari Cooper to go be a two. So yeah, I'm going to throw this at you. This was this was as of March 20th. So Jerry Judy's getting between 13 and 14 million guaranteed, right? Yeah. Here, here are the names making 14.8 down to $13 million. And okay. tell me, tell me if, if they're comparable. Okay. Tyler Lockett. Darnell I take, Tyler Mooney, Lockett. I, take uh, I take Jerry Judy. 
Okay. Oh, no, no, uh, no, no, no. I take Mooney. I'm thinking of Claypool. Okay, yeah, I take Mooney. Gabriel Davis. <sighs> Not a big DeAndre game. Hopkins. I think, I think Gabe Davis is finito, but I, I'm not a huge fan. I'd say it's a push. Uh, yeah, I think he's better than Hopkins. Yeah, Hopkins oh, so, was good, but he's... Yes. Yeah. Same market. So he's making kind of right around there where he should, right? Yeah. But but the, the point was they didn't have to do that at that point. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, and, and again, they've got they've got a little bit of cap space. They're spending it. Like I get it. My guess is the cap that went up thirty million dollars this year is only going to go up more next year. So yeah, it's one and, of those um, things they can kind of budget in. One quick NFL note too: the Jets signed Mike Williams, a uh, one year deal up to fifteen million. That's a great signing by the Jets. Garrett Wilson can do everything underneath. Uh, can just work the middle of the field like crazy, and then if he's healthy, you have a deep threat like Mike Williams. They've improved the tackles on that offensive line. Still maybe in the draft they go and get Aaron Rodgers some more offensive line help. But, boy, Mike Williams stretching the field like that, Sam, when you get a guy like Garrett Wilson, who I think is really underrated receiver, like underneath, throw it to Garrett Wilson with Mike Wilson or Mike Williams if he's a legitimate healthy guy and could be that deep threat. Garrett, Garrett Wilson could get 110 receptions next year. So as of today – and full pay for Jerry Judy, making $19.3 million a year. He is the 18th highest paid wide receiver in the league. So that would mean he'd be a number one. Should he's be. He's getting paid like a number one. And he's yeah. not a number one. And you could question, like, this is a prove it that you're a number two this year. Because I yeah. out of production, and I get it. Drew, Drew uh, who was it? Drew Locke was their quarterback. Uh, Russell Wilson, we got to talk about tomorrow. He's getting tired by everyone now. Uh, Russell Wilson. Bad, you know, bad the first year, better, a little average last year. Look who he's throwing to in Sean Payton's doghouse. He's a dickhead, Sean Payton, douchebag. So I can't necessarily blame what happened, you know, in Denver on any of those receivers. Deshaun Watson's going to be better automatically. And you know what? I don't think he's the greatest thing in the world, but he'll be better than what he's had, shouldn't he? Yeah. Again, it's all about health with him. I think if he starts to get his sea legs a little bit and can stay healthy, I think we saw some flashes of it last year, but then he just, you know, he gets hurt again. So yeah. I, 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 one of the things I do like is I'm starting to see the natives coming out with pitchforks and torches. Obviously, they're going after Russell Wolfson because the guy's a fraud, but there's a lot of people starting to come after Sean Payton that played in the league now, and I'm, I love it. I love it, too. And we'll talk tomorrow. I mean, former teammates are really crushing Russell Wilson. I mean, he is getting crushed right now. And there are Broncos greats who I haven't heard of, Sam. I haven't heard from Broncos greats in like 25 years. And these guys are speaking out on Russell Wilson. And there's no really reason why a seasoned vet or a teammate would attack Russell Wilson unless something's going on, right? Yeah, and then people just don't like frauds. They don't like yeah. they don't like people that are not genuine, right? People aren't attacking Baker Mayfield. That play no, because you know exactly what you're getting with him. Unless you're Colin Cowherd or us, but I mean, it's only the media with Baker. It's not teammates. It's look at um, who's the uh the, the guy they traded uh, Jay Cutler. No one attacks Jay Cutler. No former teammates attack Jay Cutler. He was awful. That was an awful trade for the Bears. They traded two first-round picks. So no one's attacking. There are bad quarterbacks around this league that switch teams that other teammates do not attack. Russell Wilson's getting destroyed. Yeah, they just – people don't like disingenuous. I mean, you got to – you know, if, if you want to be a Baker Mayfield or if you want to be, a, I don't know, somebody that's a little more reserved into themselves, like you can certainly do that. But when you start trying to put it out there that you're something that you're not, that's when people see through it and it pisses them off. Yeah, I think Baker's just a dude who, you know, does his thing, the rah-rah thing, tells kind of wants the fans behind him, tells people what they want to hear. Kind of he's like a college boy. Like when Baker came out of college, he said, I'm not going to change. You know, that's why he's not the first guy in the last guy to leave. He's mm -hmm. not cheap. That's why I don't think he'll ever be great too, because he just say, hey, I'm, I'm me. I'm going to be me. And I think at the NFL, and he's always had that type of attitude. He mentioned that when he was with the Browns his first year. 
I just, I think to be a special NFL quarterback, you have to be the first one in the last one to leave. Yeah. You have to be the yeah, worst. As, a, as an NFL quarterback in today's day and age, you absolutely have to. Absolutely. Yep. You ready for what's on X? Let's Speaking do it. of quarterbacks, on X, Adam Schefter reporting, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo of the Rams now said today that his two-game suspension for violating the performance-enhancing substances policy was because he messed up using therapeutic use exemption when he first got to Vegas. What does that mean? He had mean? to know. He, Translate. What does that mean? He was getting therapy and put stuff in his body that he shouldn't have. But you should know that stuff, yeah, right? Bullshit. Bullshit. Yeah. Well, I mean, do you think Jimmy G was on? We'll never know. Game, maybe. He he can he so he's gonna own the he's gonna own the suspension, but they the NFLs can't release that information. The only way what he gets busted for gets out is if he leaks it in some capacity. So basically he could come out and say whatever the hell he wants and try to paint the narrative how he wants to. Yeah, but the way it is now, Sam, stuff gets out so easy. People can get bust you for lying. Look at Ryan Braun. Remember Ryan Braun and it eventually came out. He destroyed that dude. Ryan Braun is an extra POS. Destroyed yeah, he's a, he's... that dude, dude. Destroy. Remember he had the press conference out in the field and made a big deal about it. Just absolutely destroyed this guy. And it turns out Ryan Braun was using. Said so people were coming after him because he's Jewish. Yeah, he totally destroyed that guy, Sam. Destroyed him knowing, knowing all the time that what, what oh, Jimmy it'll G... never get revealed what I did. What Jimmy G would be would probably smart to do is get put that statement out there and then just don't keep keep beating the drum and let it let it go away. Yeah, because like I was saying a minute ago, people that are disingenuous liars, whatever you want to call yeah. them, if he keeps beating that drum, that'll then it'll somehow get leaked out of what it actually was. Yeah, and don't you think he's on his last leg here as an NFL quarterback if it doesn't work out the Rams? Yeah, I, I would guess. Um, little college here, Ryan Day. Said Jay Book, want to give a shout out to him. Ryan Day said they've had not, not had any snap issues at center with Sec McLaughlin or Car, um, Carson Hunsman. He thinks McLaughlin's snapping issues at at Alabama was due to the quarterback's cadence issues. You would hope to think that, right? Uh, I don't. How is it? How is a different cadence going to change you from snapping the ball off time versus snapping it or rolling it back to the quarterback? <laughs> like I, if, if he was like okay I, I could see that if the snaps were coming when the quarterback didn't expect it okay but his issue wasn't that it was the fact that he was rolling it back to him yes hey so i'm just yeah. going with what ryan day saying i believe in ryan day boy what if those issues happen here more college football three on three sports on x nebraska's finalizing a six-year deal to make washington ad Troy Dan in the school's next athletic director, according to ESPN. Poor, poor Washington's just getting raided. I know, aren't they? Oh my goodness. A uh, small little Buckeye nugget from Steve Hellwagen. People want to know about the OSU game. This was last night. We know they're playing Virginia Tech. It's going to be Saturday. Remember the women's uh, first round of their tournaments here. So we know that the Buckeye men's will play on Saturday here. That's why I said, take the Buckeyes over Virginia Tech. Virginia it Tech is. is a horrible road team when it comes to betting. Just saying. There's two, so there'll be two games, a men's and a women's game at the shot on Saturday. Is that what he was saying? No, no, he's saying Friday, Sunday, women's, Saturday, men's. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, final one on X. NBA is adding live betting to NBA League Pass. Viewers can be able to see betting lines on the screen in real time. Select the bet they want to place, then be taken directly to FanDuel or DraftKings to place it. It feels like every league is going to do this in the future. I tend to agree, Sam. What a smart move by DraftKings and FanDuel. Well, it's going to, I would imagine too, it's going to rationalize or maybe the NBA can now rationalize saying, yeah, we're going to get a cut of this too every time. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, that's their partners. I mean, they spend tons of money to be the official betting sponsor right, of the NBA right. or whatever. Well, how does that give you any type of, you know, like the official betting sponsor of the NBA? Who cares? Or the it's, it's just a way, it's a way for the, the NBA to get advertising dollars out of, out of companies. Yeah. 
It's no, like I... Ohio State has a, you know, uh, it's the the official applesauce of Ohio State. It's like, who cares? It's, yeah. it's just marketing money. You know that. It's the last time you ate applesauce. Uh, I've probably had some in the past few months. Jackson's a big, he's a big applesauce guy. Yeah, kids like applesauce. Yeah, I don't mind applesauce. A little oat milk cookie and some applesauce. So something I, I remember in college, I'd use a snack. Uh, applesauce and cottage cheese. Really? Give that a try sometime. Mix it together? Yeah. Okay, a little sweet try- and savory all at the same time. Just try Try it. cottage cheese with A1 sauce in it. Okay. I'll, that sounds sweet and savory, too. I could get yeah. on board with that. There you go. All right, tomorrow. Tomorrow we, tomorrow we go 45 minutes, don't we? Don't we go Thursday, Friday, solo cup Friday, dude. <laughs> Nobody's it's, listening. It's NCAA tournament tomorrow, dude. It yeah, is. I think tomorrow Friday, we could just mail it in. I might yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I might be a little tipsy on Friday anyway, because I'm going to a thing for lunch that might turn into a couple of pints. Dude, we could tape. Just, you know. When do games start? Like eleven o'clock, right? I thought they start at noon, but they might be here at eleven. Do they? At noon? God, I hang on, I hang on. If only we had a device to look something like this up immediately. You know what tomorrow's poll question will be? What's the best time of year for sports? Because this might be at just this tournament. Like the NCAA tournament, you don't give a crap about any of the teams. Buckeyes haven't been in it forever. Buckeyes haven't gone to the Sweet 16 forever. And you're still, everybody is going to screw around and watch hoops tomorrow. First game tomorrow looks like it is a 12-15 Michigan State, Mississippi State. I like Mississippi State. Get on board. Get on how board. Did Michigan, I know this is, we, we've had this on the show, but how the hell did Michigan State get in the tournament? How did Virginia get in the tournament? They got in because of Tony Bennett and Tom Izzo. They kept Patino out. That's the good news, right? Good news is Michigan State in, Rick Patino out. All right, we're back tomorrow. We'll see you. See you, Sam. See you, man.